I have a question though. Mm -hmm. For someone who gets overwhelmed very easily, what would you advise them to like start? Like, where would you advise them to get started with learning history? Okay, I I always advise youngsters to start with reading one particular book, and it is titled um, "The Lost Islamic History." Okay, "The Lost Islamic History" by Firas Al Khatib. It it is an excellent introduction to the Muslim civilization. Okay, any beginner who has no knowledge of how the Muslim civilization began and what it became, uh, you must read this book, inshallah, titled uh, The Lost Islamic History. Okay, uh, Reclaiming Islamic Civilization from the Past, something like that. And it is an absolutely amazing book. Uh, it is a good introduction. It is not detailed. Uh, beware of the fact that it is not detailed. It is a simple introduction to the Muslim civilization. For advanced studies, you will have to read advanced books. And what I'm looking for is to inspire Muslim youngsters out there who are listening to this program to go out and get degrees, get masters and PhDs in history uh, of your civilization and pick a particular topic, let's say, okay, a specific topic and start studying it and master it. Okay, you won't become a master of all the history of Islam. That's not that's not very possible uh, with one lifetime. Uh, but you can potentially choose one topic and become a specialist in that. And then you can always represent that particular topic when there is a history, uh, when there's a discussion on history. Like let's say you can you can study the history of the Ottoman Empire, and even within the Ottoman Empire, you can study the history of Suleiman. You know. So, uh, Suleiman the Magnificent, one of the sultans, or you can study the history of, let's say, Sultan Muhammad al-Fatih, okay, or you can study the cultural or uh, or maybe one of the literary aspects of what the Ottomans left behind, okay. Then you can look at India, you can look at Al-Andalus, Spain, you can look at Baghdad, you can look at Abbasid Baghdad, for example, you can look at Ayyubid Egypt or Ayyubid Syria, okay, you can talk about Crusades, Muslim experience with the Crusades, you can... And the list goes on and on and on. And there is so much to study. There is so much to know that it's unbelievable. And how we have been negligent is also fascinating. It's unbelievable. Nowadays, we, when, you, when you speak to Muslim families and Muslim youngsters, you ask them a question. What would you like to become? Or what will you study at uni? They will say, I will study accounts. I will study medicine. I will study law. I will study business. And all of these subjects, if you ask them, why do you want to study this? They will say, because I want to have a career. I want to make money. So the primary purpose now of education is to make money, which is, which is, not, which is not right. This is not the right way of looking at education. One of the benefits can be money. One of the benefits can be a career. One of the benefits of your education can be, uh, you know, a good financial prospect. But... The primary purpose of education is to enlighten you, to make you a better person, to make you a, a, a better citizen of the world, to make you a thinker, to make you uh, someone who proposes solutions, who gives solutions rather than contributing to problems. So uh, we have lost, unfortunately, we have lost the purpose of education. So speaking to Muslims in particular and the rest of humanity in general, Okay, we need we need diversity in education. We need more Muslims in particular getting involved in humanities and history, specifically history, so that we can actually do all of this. So start with that book, inshallah. You will get a very good introduction from um, The Lost Islamic History okay, mm -hmm. by Firas al Khatib. It's a very good introduction to Muslim history. And then once you have finished that book, uh, there are so many different topics you can pick on or pick from throughout the Muslim history. It's dynamic. Our history is great. It's magnificent. It is so magnificent. I mean, I, I simply don't have words to explain how, how magnificent and how inspirational Muslim history is. Um, putting aside all the unfortunate events and occurrences, mm -hmm. there is a lot of positive contribution Muslims have made to human history that needs to be appreciated and understood. Inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Inshallah. The problem is... Uh, that our youngsters are not aware of these things. They haven't actually seen these things to appreciate them. They are more interested in just Justin Bieber, 
and uh, and uh, so called football stars and music artists and movie stars and they're playing games computer games day and night all day um and uh, i'm looking at my son you know who's looking at me right now uh, i'm speaking directly at him you know they spend all, all this this precious time playing computer computer games games so my my advice to you muslim youngsters is at least 10 minutes a day learn something new about the muslim civilization go on youtube and type muslim civilization and you'll be blown away by the documentaries and by some of the facts inshallah we just have to reach out inshallah mm -hmm.